We just have three main points that we'd like to make in our very brief presentation today. The first point is that um, the composition uh, of New Zealand's eligible voting age population is significantly affected by both immigration and emigration. And there's a lot of churn because there's a lot of movement in and out of the country. Um, the second point that we want to make is that if we want to understand migrant electoral participation, we have to understand that this, that term migrant uh, contains a lot of diversity, significant diversity within that group. And so any efforts to try and increase uh, voter enrolment and voter turnout amongst migrants needs to understand the diversity of the group broadly known as migrants and to respond to that diversity. Um, they may need different um, get out the vote messages. So uh, I'm just going to talk briefly about some of the different ways in which migrant uh, groups may be categorised before I turn over to my colleague Fiona to talk about reasons for or findings about different turnout and voting. So one um, way of categorising migrants is, and this is the most obvious way, is to differentiate between those who are born in New Zealand and those who are not born in New Zealand. Um, New Zealand has a very high proportion of its population born overseas, so last year over a quarter of the population were born overseas. Uh, this is up from 23% in 2006. A uh, second way of identifying or looking at the turnout of migrants is to look at uh, ethnic identity. Of course, ethnicity is a category that is intergenerational, so it captures the children of migrants and their grandchildren and so on and so forth. Those people are not themselves migrants, but nonetheless it's often a category that's used. Um, we can see from the data, the most recent data, that um, Asian, Pacific, Middle East and Latin American proportions of the population have been growing. Uh, whilst the European and Māori, uh, well, the European population is declining as a proportion of the total population, whereas the Māori population is stable or possibly declining very slightly. A third way of um, categorising migrants um, is to look at the cu their country of origin, the place they were born. Um, we know that in New Zealand, the most common region of birth in 2013 was Asia. Uh, which has just overtaken um, the UK and Ireland, which was the, traditionally the most common region of birth. However, in terms of the most common countries, single countries of birth, um, England remains the most common country of birth, followed by China, and then last year India overtook Australia to become the third most common country of birth in New Zealand. Um, just to actually return to national origin. Often national origin is conflated with ethnicity, but of course we know that they're not one and the same thing and you can't really identify them as being one and the same thing, so it's important to distinguish between them. The fourth um, significant category that um, we want to look at is citizenship and permanent residency. Um, David talked earlier about New Zealand being a trailblazer in respect of a number of uh, aspects of its electoral system. One thing that, another thing that we do is that, unlike any other country in the world, we grant permanent residents the right to vote after one year's permanent residency in New Zealand, uh, one year, one year's permanent residency. So many of the countries that we compare ourselves with traditionally, such as Canada, the US, Britain, Australia, um, require three to, they all require people to be citizens to vote in their general elections with some except with some exceptions in the UK, uh, but they require people to be there for three to five years before they become citizens, so we have to think about that when we think about the data relating to enrolment and turnout. Um, it also means that immigration becomes the important gate in terms of um, accessing the electoral role. And then the last category uh, uh, that's very significant is the immigration category that people arrive under. In New Zealand, you can arrive here as a, a skilled migrant, an investor migrant, a, a refugee, family reunification, and there's a Pacific access category. Um, each of these might make a difference to the um, type of reasons that you have for migration and also for the reasons for voting. Um, just one last point on this is that New Zealand has a very, very low rate of irregular migration and we have a very high um, proportion of our um, uh, migrants who come under the skilled category. This makes a difference to not only the composition of our uh, voting population but also the political reception that they receive in New Zealand. And now I'll turn over to Fiona. Thanks, Kate. 
Here are some findings on enrollment and turnout nationally and internationally. And while migrants everywhere vote on average at lower rates than non-migrants, we can see, and Kate's already mentioned, there's tremendous internal diversity in that group. So empirically, migrants' um, turnout increases with time. So that's length of residence, potentially. Um, North Asian residents have the lowest level of voting, and that's true both in New Zealand and internationally, in, in Canada and the, U the uh, UK, for example. South Asians, by which region the dominant group is Indian, on the contrary, have high enrollment and very high turnout. So that points to a real need to disaggregate that category of Asian that we tend to use a lot um, in census statistics, etc., and see that there are really quite different trends um, among those groups. Internationally, it's not just migration status that matters, but also ethnicity. So in the UK, black Caribbean um, voters vote consistently at lower rates than the average, regardless of whether they're foreign or native born. And finally, consistent with, you can't quite see it there, but consistent with um, international evidence in New Zealand, young migrants report low rates of enro enrollment, which maybe tells us something about the importance of the moment of transition from time-limited temporary visas, say international student visas, to permanent residents, and that, that are they being asked to sign on the roll at that point? Are they aware that they can then vote? So that's a, perhaps a transition moment that's important to think about. Oops turning it the wrong way. Um, just a couple of other points about the factors that are theorized to um, affect migrant turnout. Across countries, and that seems to be consistent, the length of resident point is re residence point is really important and associated with a greater sense of belonging, which we've seen social networks, attachment seems to increase turnout. Aside from those factors, though, when we look specifically at migrant groups, the usual hypotheses about voter turnout don't necessarily apply. So level of education and economic position, which we've talked about a lot already, don't necessarily match well when we think about, for example, the composition of the North Asian population in New Zealand, which does have a higher skill education profile than other groups. So some of those theories are not necessarily applica applicable to the immigrant groups. Ethnic concentration, often seen as segregating um, groups, leading to disengagement, low voter turnout. On the other hand, international evidence shows in first-past-the-post electorates that can actually give groups leverage, electoral leverage, um, and increased turnout if they're ethnically concentrated. So we need to think about the electoral system and the role of electorates there as well. Finally, um, degree of democracy, so there's no, that the fact that there's no habit of voting in some countries, in the home country, means migrants don't have the habit of voting there. We might say that explains a little bit the North Asian versus South Asian, Indian um, turnout differences in New Zealand. We need also to think about other groups, such as refugees, who didn't have democracy or a habit of voting in the home country, yet see that um, as a really important point when they come to New Zealand. And just the very final point um, is that we need also, I think, to think about the nature of the immigration system in New Zealand. So what are the New Zealand-based factors that distinguish, that, that create a particular composition of migrants in New Zealand, so emphasis on skilled and business migration, also the relatively high rate of onward and return migration among skilled migrants may um, lessen the, the length of residence and sense of belonging over time. I'll finish this. Thanks. <laughs>